The year is 1813. The population of Vancouver is zero. It doesn't exist. Music is created live. Zero music players in the world. Communication is done in person or by mail. Zero telephones in the world. Electricity is a laboratory curiosity. Zero electrical devices of any kind in the world. Travel is by horse and buggy and steam-powered train. If you're rich, you're usually just as bad off after seeing the doctor as before. And if you're poor, you don't see a doctor. The population of the world is one billion. My grandfather grew up in a world of tall ships and steam-powered train. And the cool new instant messaging technology was called Morse code. My mother grew up in a world of airplanes, telephones, and black and white television. I, the cute one with the bow tie, grew up in a world of moon landings and deep sea and outer space exploration. And my son is growing up in a world of planetary exploration, global communication, and unprecedented health, peace, and prosperity. How did, we, how did all this change happen in just 200 years? I think there are two reasons, and they both have to do with us. The first reason is we love to save and share ideas. For thousands of years, we have saved our ideas in stories, in dance, in songs, in traditions, in rituals. And then we've passed them on from generation to generation, but usually just to a few people. And then we invented writing and paper. And then we went on to books and the printing press. And we gathered all of this into libraries so people could come and learn. In 200 years ago, we had to meet face to face to discuss ideas. 100 years ago, we got rid of that requirement because we invented the telephone. And just 65 years ago, we invented the transistor and the whole world changed. We went digital. Now what does digital really mean and why is it important for the development of ideas? Here's what digital means. We no longer have to send the thing, the book, the picture, the record, the movie reel, the person. All we have to do is capture the information in the thing and send it. Information weighs nothing. It travels at the speed of light wherever we send it. And it can be saved forever. 30 years ago, we started to connect all of our computers together into networks. And now, for the first time in human history, we have created a global environment that gives everyone instant access to everyone else and to all past and current knowledge. And the truly remarkable thing is that we can carry this in our pocket or our purse. The second reason why all this change happened in just 200 years is because we are where ideas are born and where they grow up, where they have sex, and they were where they produce new ideas. We have an insatiable desire to ask questions and find answers. And the most important words in the English language are what, why, and how. Think about this. Everything from the invention of stone tools to the theories and technologies that allow us to understand and probe the fundamental nature of the universe all began as ideas. By peop with people pondering them. In 200 years, we have come to understand the subatomic nature of matter and the genetic and cellular basis for life, disease, and death. 
we can see to the edge of our universe and peer into the inner workings of our mind. We have created technologies to explore deep into the oceans and even deeper into space. And we can give hearing to the deaf, sight to the blind, and mobility to those people lacking it. We live in a time when the unthinkable is commonplace. The global population is now seven billion people and growing. With that many people, the big idea we need ideas and answers for, or the big question we need ideas and answers for, is not a technological one, it's a human one. How do we join together all these disparate cultures, religions, worldviews, and human conditions into one humanity? And the extent to which we can do that without losing the richness of all of our different cultures is the extent to which we pass on a better future or a better world to future generations. Now, my three kids are part of that world. So I want you to imagine a world full of creative, educated people encountering more ideas more quickly and discussing them with a larger and more diverse group of people than ever before. We live in an unthinkably remarkable time, full of ideas worth sharing and people worth sharing them with. And I thought that was an idea we're sharing with you today. Thank you.